calling a meeting to order for November 6th at 7.33. And who is taking minutes? I am. Don is taking minutes. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, you need a break. <laughs> so first we just need to see if we can approve minutes from past meetings. Sometimes it's a challenge. So let's try that first. August 21. Nobody proposing to put minutes from August. I forget where we were with that one. Was I there for that one? Um, I guess Alvaro, Renee, myself, you were not there. And John doesn't think that. Okay, so we can't do that. And Laura said, yeah. How about September 11th? September 11th. I've reviewed those. Okay. I just have one comment, I think, which I think I provided. Which one? September 11th? Yeah. I'm happy to. And what was the change that you wanted? Just take you a minute to find it. Okay. I think I put that in. Is that what you're saying? I think. It's those algorithms. The thing is. Okay. Uh, that might be going the other way. <laughs> Yeah, there he goes. <laughs> okay, item three under all the businesses that completed and some mid sentence, otherwise, it's going to be so good. That's what we do. Okay. okay. And I reviewed these minutes too. So, you? Yeah, you motion to approve the minutes of okay. September 11th. And by exception, I am seconding. So, if there are no objections, we approve September 11th. October second. I don't know. Did we get those minutes? October second. I don't think we did. I think that was second. I think that was second. Yeah. October sixteenth. I drafted and circulated them, so I didn't see any response. Okay. Let's uh, hold that one for the next meeting. Okay. Hearing out agenda items. Any of the agenda items here? We have Steve. No, Steve's not replying. Steve, can you hear us? You have to unmute yourself for us to hear you. Steve's not replying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> On to new business. B City USA resolution. We have Kendall Smith. Kendall, can you unmute yourself and talk about this? Yeah, of course. Um well, first of all, as you said, my name is Kendall Smith, um, and I'm here representing NJ Perg. Um, thank you so much for having me today, um, and I'm excited to talk about this resolution. Um, so as you guys might know, uh, bees are a super important pollinator, uh, pollinating 90% of our wild plants and 75% of our food crops. And as far as animal pollinators go, bees are really the most effective um, and that's why they're really important to protect and make sure that they are surviving. Um, and here in New Jersey, we've actually seen bee population declines at really alarming rates, um, about 51% annually. We've seen declines in beekeepers' um, colonies. So it's really extreme stuff. Um, and this is happening for a variety of reasons. Um, some of the ones that scientists point to um, are global warming, of course, loss of native habitat. 
um, and especially the use of harmful pesticides that really make it difficult for the bees to pollinate. Um, and a huge contributor to this is a pesticide um, called neonicotoids or neonics for short. Um, and what this does is it's a neurodestructor. So it makes it really difficult for bees to find their way back to their hive when they're pollinating. Um, so that's why NJ Perg is meeting with cities across the state of New Jersey um, to work to get a Bee City USA resolution passed. Uh, there's several key components to this resolution. Uh, one is working towards more native habitats. Again, that would help these pollinators. Um, another one is the ban of neonics. Um, and then also holding educational events in the community to help people understand the harmfulness of having a loss of pollinators such as the bees um, and making sure people understand why it's important to have those native habitats and reduce the use of harmful pesticides. So that's why I'm here talking to you guys today because um, I would love to um, get the Bee City USA resolution passed. So yeah, thank you guys for having me. Questions? NJ Perg, you said, right? P uh, P U R G P I P I. Yeah. yeah so NJ Perg is a student group. Um, we've been here at Rutgers for over fifty years. Um, we have a lot of students that work with us. We've collected almost a thousand petitions on this issue from Rutgers students in this semester alone. Um, and we work on a variety of uh, NJ Perg stands for New Jersey Public Interest Research Group. So we work on a variety of public interest issues. Um, this semester, we're also working on campaigns to reduce hunger and homelessness and then make textbooks more affordable. And if, if we do get a resolution before our township, um, you guys would coach us through that or guide us through or be present for that? Yes, of course. Um, we would love to be um, as involved in the process as you would like us to be um, and definitely can have students as well as myself to speak on behalf of the resolution. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have it in front of you. I can also send it in the G Zoom chat now um, if you want to look over the details of the resolution. I did, I did share it. You shared it. Oh, oh, hi. Yeah. You have it, David? I haven't. You shared it recently? Yes. Uh, it was 651 today. Um, and I know that we are reaching out to uh, the high school environmental group as well to talk with them about um, getting support from the high school group on this resolution as well. Excellent. Not having read the resol the resolution that you sent, um, what is it asking the township to do? Yeah, um, so like I said, uh, there's a couple key pieces of it. Um, one is to develop and implement a program um, that would expand pollinator friendly habitat. So that's planting native uh, wildflowers, flowers and grasses, shrubs, um, things that are really beneficial to pollinators, um, as well as implementing pollinator friendly pest management. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, the chemical neonics uh, just got banned recently at a state level um, and was implemented here at the end of October. Uh, so we're really trying to shore up that support for that statewide ban um, and make sure that we have local support as that for that as well. Um, and then again, another key piece of it is doing educational events to make sure that the public um, is educated on this issue that just talks about having uh, one educational event annually about protecting pollinators. Okay, thank you. That's good. Are all of those points under four, are they all required? In other words, supposing uh, there was, you know, Suppose when we said, oh, we don't want to ban neonicotinoids. I'm not saying that would happen. I'm just trying to understand, are all of those A, B, C, D, E, F, G all required? Or is it possible that we might not do all of those and still uh, do B City USA? Great question. Um, so some of them are required to be um, a designated city under the B City USA um, website um, and be a part of that conglomerate. Um, however, I think specifically the Neo Nix portion of it is not necessarily required, but again, um, that's the piece that's extremely important to protecting our pollinators um, and ensuring that uh, this process of 
reducing the use of harmful pesticides goes through at a state level as well as a local level. Um, Cause really when it comes to protecting our pollinators, because they only have a certain radius that they're able to pollinate, it's important to be implementing things um, at a local level. How many municipalities in Jersey have signed up for this so far? Yeah, so as of right now, there is three cities in the state of New Jersey that are um, in the uh, Beef City USA um, coalition, and we are in the works of talking with four cities as of right now this semester, um, and we'll definitely get to have some more conversations as time goes on and we're able to contact more cities um, this, the rest of the semester and then also into the spring. Actually, just for everyone's information, uh, Kimberly and some other students met with the mayor about exactly this uh, resolution. So the mayor uh, seemed to, my impression was the mayor supported this. Do you agree with that kind of one? Yeah, I definitely think that um, she was supportive of the initiative. Definitely had some questions about the state level policy, um, but I think that once we got that state level policy in front of her, um, she was understanding the ban of neonics at a state level. And I think that that she's definitely in support of this initiative from what she expressed to me during that meeting. Any other questions? That's good, I like it. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, Kendall, I think what uh, technically, uh, the DC has to do is has to uh, pass a resolution and it, that is pass a resolution to for the resolution to the township council for approval. Um, and technically we didn't have this on our original um, agenda for tonight. Uh, but uh, the township council doesn't meet, I think, until the end of the month. So we may have another opportunity to officially, but we could today, for the sake of continuity, uh, have a, a motion to approve this resolution. So does anyone have a motion? Sorry, Richard. Um, I'm sorry, I apologize, I joined late. Have we seen a copy of the resolution? Yes, you got, got it in the mail. Check your inbox. Okay. Um... I, I have not had a chance to read it over yet. I don't know if everyone else has. Well, that's a good question. I'm, I'm not trying to force it through. I'm just asking if people want to make a motion at this point. I, I think we need to read it over and discuss it before we can make a motion to do anything on it. Okay. Anyone else? You agree? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's the point that, I mean, it's it was not on our agenda, so it's, you know, it, it wouldn't be official if we passed it today in any case. So please take time to go over the resolution and we'll have it on the agenda for the next meeting. And then we can uh, to approve it and submit it to the Township Council. Got it, John? Is it okay if I have it under new business? Yeah. That's what we've been discussed. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Kendall, thanks so much for coming and, and talking about this. Yeah, of course. Um, and um, if you have it on the agenda for the next meeting, that sounds wonderful. Uh, I'd love to stop in again or have um, some other students with me, if you guys want any more information or have any other questions about the resolution, definitely stay in touch. Um, is there anything else you need from me this evening? That's it, I hope. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much. To other new businesses, maybe a charging station grant. That's just there because a grant came up and uh, Liza Viana looked at this grant and apparently the grant was not uh, a large grant for EV stations. Apparently also the grant does not pay for the make ready as they call it. 
And that make ready could be running to much more than the grant itself. Uh, apparently, it could be as much as $20,000, and the grant itself was around six or seven thousand. So if this changes for some reason, we bring it back. But at this point, I'm just reporting on it as a um, issue that did uh, come through uh, from the DEP, uh, but didn't move forward. Hey, excuse me, Richard. No. I, I, not knowing the scope of what that was, I couldn't speak to it earlier. Uh, but I did learn something from the council when I asked about the status of existing EV grants and such. Um, even though we got the first one and applied for a second one, and this must be a new one you're referring to, what we learned is once you were able to get these installed and have to have um, operational service through a provider, um, we learned that the town found that it wasn't affordable to them. So. They may not be able to put any charging stations in um, because of the affordability of running it. You mean the, the township or a a private? The township, the township. Because it was remember the township is the one in the past, and I don't know. I assume this is another township grant you're referring to for the for the government to put in a charging station. Um, and but and but and we haven't heard much talk about what they've done with their past grants that they've won and others they've submitted, and and the problem is they can win those, but they can't seem to uh, um, get favorable terms to actually run run the system, you know, once it's installed. So they've kind of they've kind of dropped doing this, and you know, you can talk to Liza and the mayor if you want to get more information on. Uh, what right. they can and cannot do with EV charging stations. Right. Okay, thanks, Steve. Leaf blower ordinances. I sent you a leaf blowing blower ordinance from Morristown. And that uh, ordinance was of interest to me uh, for two reasons. One is that it's saying it prohibits leaf blowers till September. And only you can only use leaf blowers from September, I think, through November or December now, I'm not remembering, but basically that short period. Uh, but the ordinance can be was passed by the uh, council, but it has to, it's being put for a vote by the residents. A referendum. It's mm -hmm. a referendum. Uh, so that was an interesting way in which to present this ordinance to, uh, to the people. That, so even if the township council, in this case, Morristown, passed the ordinance, it's up to the residents to approve our, the ordinance or not. So I thought um, maybe we want to take a look at that and see whether we want to move forward with that or something similar to that uh, if people are interested. See how it goes, right? Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm asking. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep our ear to the ground on it because Summit didn't go as we expected. Did right. it? So this, I'm curious about this one. This is a different, right. it's a full year time frame ban. Whereas you can't have gas, then you have to go electric if you have customers in, in the blackout. Right, there was that too, right? So it puts a burden on the company to shift to electric. Right. Yeah. And that was taken out of this paper, so that's a current. Uh, we a survey, just to survey people as to how they feel about it. I don't know how we would float that out there, but um, you know, maybe we could, I think when we did the plastic straw, ordinance for the the plastic bags plastic straws all that good stuff um i think if we got a litmus test somehow now for how people feel about the gas leaf blower ordinance we don't want to push something that's you know, that's going to meet with a lot of pushback from many people so if there's a way to kind of sense how people feel about it i think we should do that first just kind of gauge 
public perception or maybe have um um like a like a straw proposal like float something out there and then have like a feedback session that we would host on it just to get people's feedback how does that sound you guys hear me want to do a survey <laughs> on i mean do we want to like we did with the recycling task force a few years ago do we want to put out a survey and see how people respond yeah, I think that's what Kim is, is suggesting. Do a survey. I, I think it's a good idea to try to get this, get the feel of, of what the residents think. I mean, because when we talked about it the last time, we seemed to find that there were people who don't like the noise, but don't necessarily say, oh yeah, let's ban uh, leaf blowers. And they were thinking of what was happening in other towns. But maybe it's good to to try to survey people and see what, what their uh, attitudes are towards. So people, when, I know that more people are now working from home. So now you're working and the neighbor's lawnmower service is coming and, and doing things. So you're, you're getting more noise effect that's interrupting in the work day. When we've done a survey, how, like how many people have like responded? This is Angus's expertise. <laughs> about well, when, I mean, the recycling task force survey about municipal containers was. You know what? I have to look it up. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just anything. curious, but I mean, it reached it reached hundreds of people. Do we have fourteen thousand people in town? Yeah. So, so, so we're we're the something close so to that. Ten percent, yeah. or around. I think we're in the single digits percent. Yeah, about so. So it's under ten percent usually get response. Okay. But but it's still good that feedback. That was, <laughs> it's still good yeah. data. Well, that, 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 that survey was ten percent. Um, pushed it through different mediums. We had online, exactly. That's important. We had paper, you know, at town halls. So we right. pick it up and fill it out as well. So it it did. You know, we did it in multiple process whereas like, you know, when we do our registrations for the tree planting, you know, those are more limited in scope. So it really comes down to, does the, we need to kind of push up the flagpole a little bit. If there's an interest, you know, from Liza, from all the people who are involved in township, kind of like, do you want to put a survey out like this? Is this important? You know, so I just uh, came across something with my contractor I was talking to Richard about, and with what? The, my, my contractor, yeah. they wouldn't mulch. And I'm wondering if the survey can actually parse out to the to the bigger picture. What do you think about gas with leaf bolster, leaf blowers versus um, electric? What do you think about noise ordinances? And then what do you think about alternatives to leaf blowers, like the mulching thing? I mean, it's just not even on anybody's radar. Where it's here, it's like an ultimate, it's an obvious solution. So I'm wondering if we can do a survey that actually touches on multiple angles to this topic. And uh it gets people kind of thinking before they start answering surveys too. I will say, however the language is written, we have to be very intentional about how we write the language of the survey because it cannot be seen as trying to steer it in one direction. Right, right. That was one right. thing we encountered language-wise with the first paragraph in our task force, um, task force uh, survey because it essentially seemed to blame China for the problem but they weren't in the wrong for like, our bad recycling is not China's problem. But it, let's just say members of my heritage community, some of them didn't respond so favorably to the way that was worded, you know? Because so, it came about the political topic they knew on the national level, which yeah. was that, yeah, that, that one piece of news. Right? Yeah. So, my answer. What? Um, what, what's that? That's why, yeah, so let's just, you know, let's, I mean, if we want to come up with a list of questions, yeah, and then we'll just, you know, dissect how we how we want to write it out and then submit it up, submit it and say, hey, let's, you know, want to do this. Okay. Even so the order of questions. Is, my the list question, is good. My question is who wants to work on this? Maybe do you want to work on this? Yes, there should be a collab. I mean, be multiple people on everyone has different has different uh views on it. So right. you know, if you do in. you want me to start it and circulate it? Sure. And then we can all touch it. Sure. I can put the first pieces together. I'll, I'll basically just put questions together, multiple choice, sure, or something. I guess what I know would be like. Let me pull up. Let me pull up the one we did. 
Yeah, yeah that's probably a good start. All right, cool. Okay. And after we get the results back from that, we might want to just have a, a an open session during our one of our meetings just to discuss it, like you would discuss a straw proposal. So anyone who didn't already provide comments or even those who did could talk a little bit more about the topic if they wanted to, just so that we're trying to get as much feedback on it as we can. And, and give people the opportunity for input. One thing that also made, gave the other um, survey more weight was also we pre-announced it at a town council meeting. It was discussed among the council. You know, it eventually led into a presentation. You know, so there was a lot of formality to the whole thing because it was a, which is, I'm not sure if that will have the same impact here because that one had hundreds of thousands of dollars at stake township money. This is, Right. Doesn't really have any money at stake outside of well, you know, the so cost to, a, the, to the landscape. Kind of the landscape, you know, exactly. Yeah. And every resident in town who owns a leaf block is going to feel like they need to go and buy a new leaf block. Uh, I don't think many residents have gas ones, though. Do they? Well, see, a lot of people still do. Do they really? Yeah, I don't know. Batteries are expensive. I jumped on the bandwagon. <laughs> mine are way on a little bit, too. Huh. Was that? Sure. Okay, mine market softening a little bit, too. Shares are down on all the uh, lithium companies. <laughs> but that's not that even right there. Just with the survey. There's thing. also this thing called a rake. <laughs> I think that we should have, like, if people can't come to the meeting, that, you know, they could speak more about it. We should just have a place where you can just put comments. Yeah. Yeah. I, like that. Yeah. I think it's good to get the word out. And you know, and, and get the sense of the community, what, uh, how people feel about it. Now, is the goal for this, because it's going to take some time to kind of announce this, and, you know, we're already in November, are you aiming for next year? I think so. I'm assuming it's the season. Oh, okay. Lead it in the start of the spring before everyone even cares about leaves. <laughs> and then in the, by the summer, if something makes sense or it doesn't make sense, then which way you know, a lot of decisions before the fall, maybe. Right. Okay. All right. So, uh, plans 43 Pine Grove Road. I, I just put this on the plans because we had already uh, approved it, but there was, uh, I failed to supply everyone with the actual recommendation and then sent the recommendation after the fact. So, just want to uh, give everyone a chance to. Uh, if there's any objection to that. Otherwise, uh, we'll just drop it off because, and uh, take it as approved. 43 Pine Road Road. No objections. No objections. 130 Orchard Lane. That's a new one. Uh, I sent you the uh, recommendation. This is another case of a lot. That it exceeds the maximum impervious service and actually it already exceeded the maximum impervious. Now it increases it uh, uh, even more. So the recommendation is basically seeing that the total proposed lot coverage exceeds the maximum allowed of the zone and groundwater recharge apparently exceeds 12 inches a year. Environmental Commission recommends the application of submitted to my and now, of course, recommending the infrastructure. Any comments or questions on this? No, no, in agreement with the recommendation as is. Okay, so a motion to accept the recommendation for 130 Orchard Lane as written. Okay, second, second. Okay. Any objections? No objections, then we consider it approved. Okay, on to all business scout projects. Any scout projects? No, okay. that's for me. Okay. Community Garden, uh, Karen Hanslow uh, said that she's putting out, wants to put uh, out new applications for 2024. They have a couple of free. Uh, I'll work on that. Get that out. She asked that came us to. Uh, that 
stormwater ordinance and MS4 education status, I attended the ANJEC meeting and saw that the uh, stormwater ordinance has to be uh, approved by next July. Uh, and there is a, I attended a meeting where they were talking about uh, a, a revised, a revision to the model ordinance from the state that is supposed to be available this week. As soon as I get it, I will forward it to everyone. Dr. Train, Jim. Um, I, we, we wrote the article, um, I saw it published, thank you, and uh, saw it on our, our web page, and I know we got at least one or two likes on it, so hopefully um, it reached enough people that um, they are inspired to clean their drains and adopt drains. That, that's all I have. Anyone else want to add? What else? I also posted it on Facebook. Well, sustainable Jersey Action. So, as I said at the last meeting, I would uh, like to try to arrange a meeting at the Green Team, but I'm waiting until we have a new Township Council, whoever they are, and once. Three ordinance. There is now a okay. I have one thing to okay. add to that. So there was um, a community shredding event on October 21st in Berkeley Heights. So I just followed up with Union County um, to see the numbers for that. So update the information that I already submitted for that action. So I need to go back and compare what it was for the one that I think was in, I think it was in May. Uh -huh. So I don't remember and I cannot compare the difference, but there was 568 cars at the event, um, 31,000 pounds of paper shredded at the event. How and there was 31,000. Um, and they had three shredding trucks on location for the event, and they only had one truck that reached capacity. So I can, yeah, see next time on okay. how those compare from last time in May. But that's it. Okay, terrific, thanks. That's 15 tons of paint. That's a lot of paint. That's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, but it's um I guess it's advertised to all of the counties and this was one of okay. the last ones. All right. So the county what rather than the town program? Well, yes, but yeah, but this this one and the one in May were in our town and this was the last one for the year. So right. that may have affected the numbers. Okay. Uh, I don't remember what it was before. Yeah. Thanks so much, yeah. Tree ordinance. Uh, there is now a final model ordinance that has been published. Um, Alvaro and I haven't gotten a chance to get together to talk about it. We have to share it with you once we have it. It didn't look very different from the one that we were previously working out for. Right, there was quite a lot of little things that I think changed. Um, of course, the, uh, as you're aware, the ordinance does not uh, uh, require or does not put in numbers for what the cost of a permit would be, how much you would pay into a, a trust fund. That's always left to the township. That's yeah, they left us to figure out the consensus. Yes. Uh, the other thing I thought that was strange about or awkward about that ordinance is it talked about so many trees. Per acre. Yes. But I, most of our homeowners, most of our lots are a quarter of an acre, three eighths of an acre, half an acre. So we need to convert that to what does that mean for a homeowner? Does it mean? And that's a quite high question. I should have asked at a meeting I was at with the 
uh, DP um, people from the NS4 mm -hmm. uh, uh, division. Uh, well, I can follow up with that. I agree with you. That seems to be a puzzling statement. Why you know, the number of trees per four acres? Yeah. It'd be good to see what other what they recommend for towns to do with right. four acre lots, half acre lots. Or maybe how to rework that. Or maybe we can say simply, okay, we're not going to worry about the acre lots. We we did a different way of calculating of having that done. Uh, Alvaro proposed that if there are X number of trees on a lot, so that then you would be allowed to um, uh, take one down, uh, you know, per number of trees. I have to go back to the um, uh, proposal that we made. Instead of going by four acres, I mean, how many, how many lots in town are? Four acres. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. the industrial, you know, commercial places, you know, on yeah. uh, then they don't have trees. So it's, and it's a puzzle. I think it would be good if we can follow the model ordinance rather than invent our own approach. Yeah. Well, no doubt about that. It's good to follow the model, but that is yeah. a puzzling statement. Yeah. Yeah, it would be good if you could go back and try and find out how they think it should be implemented for us. Okay, recycling and cleanups. Stuart Newman wrote an email saying, yes, they're working on a county plan. It's uh, a lot of work is in the details. That's what I got out of this email. Yeah, let's let's make that a separate um, item of business. Well, we're on it right now. <laughs> but I mean, for future meetings. Oh, for future meetings. Yeah. Okay. Sure. But yeah, I'm I'm on I'm on board with you know. Let's see how it pans out. Right. What is this? Um, is this the um? This is the Public Waste Street? for Energy um initiative. And the viability of it on a countywide scale. Stewart is assessing and I'm have a meeting in the future, have a discussion about it, um, the complexities. You look like you have a question. Well, I don't have no, I have a, don't have the best ears, and I'm trying to. Oh, uh, it okay. says uh, taking food waste uh, and converting it to energy. This is a program, so waste management has. Uh, the, the conglomerate has spearheaded from like this. We've met with them before. Um, it converts a lot of uh, uh, organic matter uh, that includes even things that are not compostable, like such as oils, meats, etc. cetera, um, converts into a bio sludge that can be used for energy. Um, other towns, Cranford, um, Westfield, uh, there's one, I think it's Westfield, and I believe there's one. I think Summit has a composting. They also all had a conservation site to collect mm -hmm. matter. Um, and I remember in our previous meeting with waste management years ago, um, you know, at the time it wasn't viable because you know, there were no surrounding towns were in the program. And so it didn't make financial sense from a transportation perspective to truck said goods. They really had a residential and a commercial component. I think we were probably more interested in the commercial component because that's steady production of food waste, you know, and it didn't, I think the inclination of the, the idea at the time was it wouldn't cost anything extra beyond what the uh, retailers or the, you know, um, the businesses were already paying for garbage collection anyway. So it'd be kind of, you would kind of even out, at least that's what it was years ago. This is a little bit different. This is county, Implementation potentially, and it's just a lot to figure out in terms of how such matter would be collected. How would it even be separated? Well, oh, it doesn't need to be separated. Well, the idea is you, you put certain items into one bin and versus another. So, things such as, say, um, food containers that would not be included with it. So, you would have to have two, there would be separation of what is food and what's not. Other cities do some some level of this already. 
kind of matter to this. So, but it just has to, you just have to be specific in what kind of matter goes where. But, you know, use it for energy, but rather than going to landfill is kind of the idea to make it useful rather than just lie there, not decomposing. Methane gas from a landfill can be used to generate electricity. Of course. Yeah, we could do waste management does that in Florida now. We try to get the um, uh, wastewater treatment to look at that because they generate methane as well. But there were so many problems with the wastewater treatment, they didn't want to. Mm -hmm. So maybe in the future, that could come out. Uh, anything else on risk that means? Anything else? Recycling and plants? No. Okay. So the county plan that's in the works? It's not a plan yet. Okay. It's not a plan yet, but they're working on it. Okay. And that was specific to um, food waste, is what they're trying to make the building plan after. Topics for the township newsletter. And... Do you want to remember? Well, the, next, uh, the next one comes up on November 17th. Yes, yeah, the 17th. So. What's on the docket now? Let's say, I mean, snow isn't quite, <laughs> that'll be the first week of December, so it's really not quite snow season yet. Yeah, you want to get to that. Like I was going to say, salting driveways and stuff like that, a stormwater management topic, but that's probably January, February time frame. Yeah, I'd probably say this. Yeah, it's January. I got nothing. Okay. Uh, the St. Bernard Parks and Trails. Okay. A proposal from Pat Chandler, I didn't get a chance to ask her whether we're ready to uh, vote on that. Uh, she was traveling, so I would expect I will hear uh, back from her on her proposal uh, to establish uh, a um, working office uh, in the uh, county park. Uh, that has to go through the county, and she is proposing that the Environmental Commission will also be part of that uh, program. So when I hear more about that, then I will share her. Anything else? Or say for the work, Anything else? Are you doing any more? Nothing? She, uh, Patricia says that work in the winter time is preferred. Uh, so. Uh, I've actually connected her with scouts, see okay. what they can do for merit badges and things like that. But okay. uh, she, when she's she's busy this month, and she says we'll get to work in the winter. So when we do, I'll have a topic for the newsletter and start pushing it out. Okay. Uh, grants, the RGGI grant. Um, we're still waiting to hear from the NJDEP to approve the final agreement. Once that is approved, we are ready to move forward. Community Energy Plan Grant. Okay. Um, the, the the Community Energy Plan Grant will be discussed at the League of Municipalities conference next week briefly. And I'm aware that Sustainable Jersey and the Board of Public Utilities plan to roll that out shortly. And that is all I can say about it now, but um, I think that we should look into it. I think it is worthwhile for us to apply for it. So if we need to alert the council that we are thinking about applying for it, we should do so. It's just, it, all it is is um, our filling out an application to say we are going to put together a sustainability plan. And we just need to articulate what that plan is going to be. So we don't have to do anything specifically to, to get the grant. We just have to say that we have, you know, we're making a plan and this is our plan. It's a plan to plan. I thought that we had. Uh... Let Liza know about this, but I could be wrong. 
uh, and she's the person uh, whom we should uh, notify about this. You want to draft uh, a short email to Liza, Kim? really need to recuse myself from this <laughs> so <laughs> I, I you know once we have once it's been released i think that's the better plan for us to do um and uh, i'm happy to discuss it with whoever's going to draft it once it has been released but i i would like to recuse myself from things to do with it while i can promote what it stands for, I should not have anything to do with actually applying for it. And I'm wondering if there's any update on that. I think that's another album. Else has anything on that? Um, Can we go back to the last one a second? Yes. Um, do we need to let Liza know that we're going to be making an app requesting a we, grant? If we if we are going to request a grant, we need to let her know. So if Kim cannot do that, then should one of us take that on? That would be nice. You want to take that on? What is, what is the time frame in which we'd be making that, um, proposing to make that grant application, Ken? Um, So we'd have to likely make it in the first quarter of next year, of, the, of 2024. It, it, is, is that a good estimate to get, or is it January, or is it first quarter? I don't, again, I don't know what the dates are officially going to be yet, and the grant has not been publicly released, so I can't really say more than that. Um, but it will likely be early next year, and the dates are TBD. So most likely at some point in the first quarter. And there, okay. there so will... I, I Sorry, will let... That's good enough. I will let um, Eliza know by whatever the right means is that we will be likely putting in a grant, wanting to put in a grant request early next year. Um, yes, and I, I'm aware that there will likely be, um, last time around, there was a resolution that the township had to um, approve for the, for any, municipality that was an applicant in order to apply for the grant. So um, we should be thinking about what board agenda, council agenda we want to get that resolution on. So maybe in the message, just ask Liza, you know, if there's, can we get it on the, on one of the agendas once it's released? so that we can get the resolution together just for us to submit the application. Got it. Okay, thank you, David. Okay. Composting machine, any update? Mostly, yeah. Nothing. Seed donation. So, um, I think we're supposed to find out if we get the donation in November from Hudson Valley, and it is November, so I think I'll send an email. I feel there wasn't an, an exact date, they just said November, so, and then um, it said like December, or January, the seeds would actually be sent out, so, so yeah, so I'll send an email. I think that's that's okay. also your just, ordering seeds. Yes. I don't know if you wanted me to talk about that <laughs> the winter walk one. Yes. Or you okay. Want me to... okay. Uh January distribution, you think? Yeah, if we get it. Yes. 
Thank you. All right. Rainbrook Flood Commission. I'm oh, sorry. Do we have um we have winter walk as a topic? Yes. Yeah, it's after this one. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that, sorry. Rainbrook Flood Commission. I talked with the mayor um about this. Apparently the Three Acres was going to send uh, a uh, uh, some information about what they had planned for the flooding in their area, uh, and uh, that hasn't happened yet. So we're still waiting for Three Acres to send uh, information about their uh, plan for flooding. Winter walk. So, what is what are our activities at this point? Okay, so I've asked the Rutgers if they want to show us uh, um, posters that would be related to storm water, uh, but I haven't seen anything yet. So we should be unexpected to see something in the next week or so. The other thing was giveaways, right? So we would do seeds. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, so I just bought um, butterfly milkweed seeds that are coming. And I asked um, Ingrid and Julie, the two women who came here to talk about um, native gardens and the use of pesticides and insecticides, and asked them if they could help me package them because that took a, a while for me last year. Um, and they they both agreed and they both were very excited. So I'm happy that I'm going to get help and I'm happy that they're seeing what they commented on, you know, something happening with it. And also, it's possible we might be able to get some sort of game for kids to play. We have room for this. We don't exactly know how much space we have. Do we? we have the table we're sharing with um, half the table. Half the table is kind of tight. Well, half a booth, sorry. Half a booth. Half a booth. Half a booth. <laughs> half a booth. Half a booth. <laughs> okay. Good. Anything else on our table? Is there anything we would want people to potentially sign up for? Oh, or... trees. I, okay. I actually have a. Uh, for one of my events, I made a, a sign-up sheet. I'll try to show it to you as I'll take a picture of it, but it was something you could put in a dry erase marker and then it would their name and contact information. And then you can use it over and over again. So I could provide it for you. It was, it was kind of centric to trail repair and that activity, but it involved joining the environmental commission, joining the trails, adopt the trail program. And if you don't want to use that, we can make a different one that's a little more centric to the environmental commission as a whole. But it was a cool thing to do because if you just dry erase the name and contact information on there was like on a wheel depending on what you wanted to do, what it touched. So I could show it to you if you're interested for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then the other thing too is I can, if if you want and we have the space, I can bring in Union County Connect stuff too. Okay, okay, so I'm gonna be excited in space. It sounds like it, yeah. Okay. I'll say look at it though. <clears throat> okay. What do you have on deck for Union County Connect? Uh, it's, Nothing. Uh, I think they got a little. We got a little overwhelmed. We had a meeting tonight, and uh, it was a little emotional. We, I think, we ran fast this year. Uh, they're pushing the bridge over twenty two, the pedestrian bridge. Um, there's a lot going on. We're, we're building a membership list, and it's. I don't think there's enough people to take on the work. So it's just otherwise, it's going well. It's just growing pains. Nothing else on the wall. All right. Then we have citizens hearing on any environmental issues. Jerry. Yes. I have no idea what I'm doing or how to do it, but I would like to put Westminster Church property on the agenda if we could. Um, they recently lost the uh, Board of Adjustment, where they were trying to sell the property to build houses, but the church needs money. 
And it was brought up at that meeting that there are several different types of grants that they may be eligible for. I just would like to put this on the radar screen and let them, I don't know if they're gonna be, I can't pronounce that word, Amiga. Willing to accept the help yet. <laughs> um, but uh, I would like to do anything we can to help them out. Um, I was pleased at the outcome of the board, but I don't want the church to fail either. And if they have property that uh, Dr. Stanley's presentation she made, it's a A and a B value for, um, I think it's it's worth pursuing that we, I don't know, it was a four point something acres that after you chopped it up. Um, and if you all have kids that play baseball, if you've ever played baseball at Mary Kay McMillan, you look out at third base line, the third base pole, and those houses were big, to be built right there on the outfield of Mary Kay McMillan's. But it's, it's a beautiful wooded area that I think would be good to preserve and would also help if we could get a grant, something that would help out the church. Um, I don't know how we do that. Notice I said we, I'm willing to help out, but I don't know. Do you, do you have contacts at the church? I'm probably not the person you would want to contact. I do have, because I'm a veteran, I do have contact with Ted Romanco. But even as a veteran right now, I probably wouldn't want to approach him because I think not very pleased the outcome. The, uh, I mean, we, I mean, we as an environmental commission did propose, you know, putting up at least part of the property for conservation. It's possible we could, uh, you know, be amenable, agreeable to putting up more of that property that they want to sell as, you know, for conservation, because most of that property is, is uh, forest. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, the, um, the key thing is that the church needs to tell us they're interested. If that's the case, then we can move forward. I, I, as the commission, has been told that we shouldn't be directly contacting the church. I can go through the town and say, ask the town, um, to contact the church and see what if there's anything that we have. But my understanding at this point is the church has seen that we proposed to, to apply for grants to conserve that property. Now is the right time to do that because the, the uh, state and the county uh, have opened up a period of applying for grants. For The other thing is that the Environmental Commission doesn't act independently that way. It has to go through the Township Council. So we propose to the Township Council to acquire this land through grants. So not through uh, the Township putting out money, but authorizing a grant application that you know, a grant application that the Township can approve. That's the way that process moves. Um, we're not independent of the town of Madison. So, so at this point, I would say I'm happy to try to contact the township and say, uh, you know, we're, we're proposing to uh, apply for grants for land conservation and uh, can. Is the, is the church interested in doing? I think at, at this point, that's the only step we can take. Okay. Well, that's a good first step. Okay. I mean, I, I would love to say, yeah, I'm fine with Ted, 
but I'm not. Right. I'm no, not. No, and if it's no. if it's going to put a barrier instead of opening right. a door, right. I, I'd rather not. I didn't know. You know I didn't yeah. know what your relationship is. That's no. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm one of those that bought it. So. Right. And it, it's also on the record too that the the people who oppose that particular project are actually in support of the church. So that's good to have a record too. You know, nobody wants to see the church go under because there's consequences right. with that. Right. But where would that be? It's on record here. Oh, okay. So, yes. I mean, I'm not the only one right. of the group. That... Okay. So so now I need to ask the rest of the commission, is that agreeable to the rest of the commission that I would, you know, ask the town to ask the church whether it's interested in uh, the commission applying for a grant uh, to conserve uh, the property. Or a portion of the property. Or a portion. Because yeah. one of the things that was part of that sale was where that old house is. That's, that would be prime for a builder to go in there and put a house in there, with a driveway. And there's no issue because it's existing. Right. No, it's, yeah. it's, I mean, it's, it's an open question, right? It's yeah. either part or all of the property that the town, that the church wants to sell. Does the church own that lot? That that's that house? Yes. Okay. That's definitely there. Yeah, that was going to be one of the four houses. Right. They would tear that down and build another one there. I get a sense from the commission. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's great. good. Right. Well, since the commission is that uh I would uh ask the town uh to if uh, they want to contact the church. And see if they're interested in uh, grants for the land conservation. Any or all of the land that they would raise. Okay. Right. Anything else before we adjourn? All right, Steve. Yep, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Kim? You made it to the end of the meeting. Yes. Um, I was looking into uh, different sessions at the, the League of Municipalities. Um, I don't know if it's possible for me to attend, but if it is possible, there are, there's at least one or two sessions that look pretty interesting, um, one of them being developing our town's sustainable success through tourism. And, and we have a lot of interesting stuff going on in our town. I know the Connell Center is trying to be like the place to look to in New Jersey as like a model area for um, being very energy conscious, being forward looking so I thought that could be interesting for us um yeah I, I, I don't know what they have to say but it sounded like a very interesting thing in addition to like the stormwater sessions that they're having so I don't know if it's uh, you you tell me Rich like what is anyone else planning to go from our town Oh, I mean, normally the municipal uh, council and some of the municipal employees will attend that uh, uh, meeting. Um, I don't know of any environmental commission or one else, but that doesn't mean you can't. The question I would have is, would you be attending just for one day? I'm gonna say probably, probably yes. I I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to take off from work just because we have a, a lot of activity going on right now. Um. So yeah, I I don't know. Three days is likely not as far as me at this point. We can also find out who's going and suggest certain. Uh, Presentations for them. 
That's true. And I know the yeah. planning board gets invited, but I think Liza goes at least. I think Liza will, will be attending. So we could we could suggest a couple environmental topics for her to visit. And it wouldn't surprise me if the uh, if the mayor attends as well. So um, I checked with uh, finance whether we had any money uh, for you to attend, and the answer was yes. So what I would suggest is that you notify Barbara Russo of your plan to attend and, and tell her what the expected uh, budget is for that. Uh, since the town does um, how it, so town, township employees do attend, she may be able to immediately just do a PO so that you don't have to put out money to register, but she would uh, complete the registration with a PO. But I'd say just discuss it with Barbara. She'll know, you know, which way to go, whether you, because I think the meeting is fairly soon, right? So yes. turn around. Well, time may be short. Yes. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, anything else? Ah, do I hear a motion? Motion to adjourn at 8 39 p.m. Second. I'll second. Okay, second. Meeting is hereby adjourned.